Hello and welcome to our mock live class today. My name is Kate Deary. I am a coordinator for recruitment and admissions here at Geese Online. And I'm very excited to be spending the next hour or so with you. Our time today will be spent providing you with an opportunity to understand how live lectures work here um, and how they're delivered and have a chance to interact in this setting um, here at Geese Online. We do offer three online master's degree programs, the IMBA, the IMSA, and the IMSM program, as well as two brand new graduate certificate programs in strategic leadership and management and accounting data analytics. GEESE graduate level programs are innovative, they're affordable, and they're designed to be specifically online to offer a real flexibility and access for all of our full-time working professionals. Today, you will experience a webinar from one of our talented faculty members, and you will be able to get a, just a little bit of a glimpse into what kind of content is shared within Geese. Our courses balance foundational material shared on the Coursera platform with an interactive high engagement component as well from the Illinois platform. The high engagement component includes a live class each week and many other facets to learning like group projects, office hours, networking, and being part of a great university like Illinois. Since we don't have time today to chat too much about our programs, I am going to share this QR code on this um, first screen. If you'd like to speak with myself or an admissions counselor to discuss your goals or just discuss whether or not this program is right for you, I would really love to connect with you. Just scan this QR code uh, that you can see on the screen right now uh, with your camera and it will give you a link to fill out a short form. Before we get started learning today, I did want to cover a few housekeeping items. I see some of you have your cameras turned on. I encourage all of you to turn on your camera so that we can see all of your wonderful faces here today. Please note that you are all muted in order to minimize background noise during this class. There may be moments though when Professor Bednar uh, invites you to participate and our technical team will unmute your microphone for you. Um, if you have any questions, please use the raise hand feature and we will call on you. We will also have a breakout session during our time today, which will allow you to participate with your fellow session attendees. And then lastly, we, we do invite you to feel comfortable participating in the chat. I will be there to answer questions as well. I am super excited for our live class today. In this mock, mock class, uh, Professor Bednar will lead a very interactive session that will provide an introduction to the core leadership class that we offer here on designing and managing organizations that he teaches within the IMBA and IMSM programs. During this session, you will discuss some of the common challenges faced within your organizations and also learn to apply a framework that will help you and your organization better understand these challenges. This mock class will give students an idea of what that interactive live session um, is like within Geese Online. Professor Michael Bednar is an Associate Professor of Business Administration, Academic Director of Experen Experiential Learning, and Robert and Karen May Faculty Fellow at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. His primary research interests include corporate governance, executive leadership, and the relationship between organizations and the media. He joined the University of Illinois in 2008 after receiving his PhD in strategic management from the University of Texas at Austin. He also holds a BS from Brigham Young University, graduating cum laude in 2002. Bednar has received numerous teaching awards, including the Geese College of Business Excellent in Excellence in Graduate Teaching Award in 2019 and the Dean's Impact Award in 2018. He serves on the editorial review boards for Strategic Management Journal and for the Strategic Management Journal and, oh, excuse me, uh, for the Ac Academy of Management Journal. He currently teaches BADM 509 in the IMBA program. With that, I would love to turn it over to Professor Bednar and enjoy this mock live class. Wonderful, thank you, Kate. It is so good to be here with all of you. And uh, good morning, it's still morning in Champaign, Illinois. It might not be morning where you're at. I was looking at the chat and we have people from all over the world. 
which is one of the really cool things about our online programs here at Geese is there, there really is such a diversity of experience that we're able to tap into in these classes. So what we're going to try to do here today is we're going to try to invite you in to a classroom and give you a little bit of a sneak peek about what a, what a live session is all about in, in some of our online, online programs. So again, really excited to be with you here today. Uh, what we're going to try to do here today, we're going to do some quick introductions. I'll introduce myself. Kate did a nice job of giving you a little bit of an introduction about, about me. I wish we could introduce everybody, but it uh, looks like we've already got almost 130 people on the, on the chat. So obviously we don't have enough time to uh, introduce each and every one of you, but I hope that we'll have some opportunities to interact and, and learn from each other here today. And then we'll dive into the subject matter. Uh, I'm a little bit biased, but I think this is a really fun class. Uh, the, the class that I teach is about designing and managing organizations. So we're going to talk a little bit about organizations here today. So Kate gave you a little bit of my background. Uh, I've, I've grown up around universities and I actually grew up, well, so I guess I think of my, my, my whole life, I think in terms of college mascots. So I don't know if anybody recognizes this, but uh, if, if you see this red pig, uh, that's actually the, the mascot of the University of Arkansas. So I actually grew up in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in a university town, and so I cheered for the Arkansas Razorbacks. I did my undergraduate degree at BYU. They're the Cougars. Uh, I actually did my undergraduate degree in accounting. And real quick story about my background in accounting. B BYU has an awesome accounting program. And I actually interviewed with some of the big five accounting firms at the time. Notice I said big five. I'm old enough when it used to be the big five accounting firms. Some, some of you might know that it's now the big four. And uh, I was actually interviewing with I had a job offer at a firm that you may recognize called Arthur Anderson. And at the time, Arthur Anderson, they were the auditor for a firm that you might have heard of called Enron. And so right about the time I was graduating, I had this uh, sweet job offer from Arthur Anderson. I was reading in the Wall Street Journal about some shady stuff going on with Enron. And I called up the HR representative from Arthur Anderson that I was working with. And she assured me, she said, Mike, don't worry about it. This is no big deal. It's all going to blow over. Well, fortunately, I had the uh, I, I had the foresight not to listen to that HR rep, and uh, I decided not to take that job. And it's a good thing that I didn't, because I would have been fired before I even started. So I decided maybe I should go back to school. <laughs> so I, I went back to school and uh, got my PhD at the University of Texas at Austin, and had the chance there to work with some awesome faculty, and started doing research about corporate governance issues. And then back in 2008, I started here at the University of Illinois, and uh, I never thought I'd end up here in the Midwest, but here I am uh, 14 years later, and it's been fantastic. It's been a really great uh, place for me and my family. It's been a great place professionally. Uh, I've continued to do research. I also teach. So I teach in our online programs, which is what will give you a little bit of a flavor of what we do here today. And I also am involved uh, as, as Kate mentioned, I'm the academic director of our Office of Experiential Learning, and we're doing some really exciting things here at Geese. We're trying to make education more real world. So just to give you one example, we take every undergraduate in the College of Business here at Geese has an opportunity as part of a class to work with a real live company working on a real business problem. And so I've helped to design the curriculum for that and help lead that effort. So lots of really neat things going on here at the Geese College of Business at the University of Illinois. So let me give you just a little bit of a sense of what we're going to do here today. So today we're going to spend, we're, we'll spend the next 45 minutes or so really doing what we would do in a live session. And the live sessions really are the heart of the online programs that we offer here at Geese. And in the live sessions, we do lots of things. Uh, in, in this class, I, I try to have this not just be me talking at you, okay? So I'm going to need your help here today uh, if, if this is going to really be a mock live session, if, if we're really going to reproduce what we do in a, in a typical live session, I'm going to need your help, uh, and that help is going to come in the form of participating, right? So in these live sessions, often we'll do cases. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a case study together. Uh, we have opportunities to, to learn from each other. Again, we have such a diversity of individuals and experience. 
and and we try to draw on that during during these during these live sessions. We also do breakout groups where you have a chance to interact in smaller groups with some of your classmates, and we'll have a an opportunity to do that as well here today. So this is the live session part of this course. What you would do in between the live sessions, uh, Kate alluded to this, we, we have some content on Coursera, right? Some of you may be familiar with the, the MOOC platform Coursera. So there's some asynchronous uh, course content where you go and I've, I've created some, some videos that go along with this class. And so you, you watch those videos, there's little uh, you know, as, assessments that help make sure that you're you're tracking with the with the content there. So so there's some assignments on the on the on the Coursera platform as well. You do that in preparation to then come to the live session where we can get more in depth and we can do some additional some some additional things together. After a live session like what we're going to experience here today, then you would have some opportunities to complete some assignments where you would reflect on what we've done in today's live session. And then you'd also have some assignments to help you prepare for our next live session. So the class that I teach, we have eight weeks, eight different live sessions, like we're, what we're going to experience here today. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive in. And let me give you just a little bit of an introduction to what the class that I teach uh, in Geese Online Programs is all about. This class is all about organizations. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, organizations are fascinating. Or organizations help people to do amazing things that they could never do on their own, right? And at the same time, some of my most frustrating experiences in my life have been dealing with organizations. So organizations are kind of like this double-edged sword. They do amazing things and they help us to accomplish things that we could never do individually. And at the same time, every organization faces some fundamental issues that can make life in organizations sometimes kind of frustrating. And sometimes it feels like it's really hard to get things done in an organizational context. So the purpose of this class is to help us understand some fundamental issues about organizations. And as we do that, we should be better positioned to design more effective organizations. So the first half of this class, the first four weeks, uh, is the part of the class that we call designing the organization. And then the last four weeks, of the class is what we call managing the organization. To the extent that we understand a little bit more about organizations, some of the fundamental issues that we face in organizations, then we're better positioned to be better leaders, better managers within organizations. All right, this is your first chance to participate. I wanna ask you, think about life in your own organizations. What are some of the issues, what are some of the problems that you face as a manager or as an employee in some of the organizations that you belong to at this moment. So if you can, uh, if, if you, for those that want to participate, if you can hit the, the raise your hand button, then we'll have a chance to call on a couple of you. Let's see, my eyes are getting a little bit better. Let's see, is it Brian? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? I think I got the... Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for participating. Thanks for being our first one. Uh, so for us, in terms of organizational structure, it's uh, always siloed communication. Um, we work in a, a franchise distribution model, and a lot of times you have marketing working separately from development, working separately from operational support, and that's always a... Um, a tough one when designing the effective organization that we see is making sure that the communication is kept to a minimum, but everyone knows what they need to know to keep moving things forward. Awesome. I love what you talked about there. You, you talked about a couple of issues that we talk about exactly in this class. We have a module where we talk about organizational structure, right? And, and we talk about what are some of the different structural uh, just design options that organizations use and it turns out there's not a perfect structure that solves all of your problems, right? Every structural choice that you make uh, as, as a leader in an organization, it, it brings some pros and cons, right? And, and one of the challenges that often we see is that as we design an organization and we create structure to try to get uh, people working together, it often creates those silos that you talked about, Brian. And then there's the challenge of how do we bust those silos, right? How do we increase communication between those silos so that we're not 
so, so that we actually are gaining the advantage of being an organization, right? Uh, that, that we're not all doing our, our, our own thing. And I'm sure many of you have faced that, that same type of challenge, right? How, how do we design an organization uh, to be efficient, but at the same time, how do we design communication mechanisms so that we can adapt and, and, and so that we can be flexible? Those are some of the things that, we, that, that we'll talk about um, in, in, in this class, right? If, if, you were a, if, if you were in our IMBA, for example, again, that, that would be a big theme of what we talk about in this class. Let's see, is it, is it Priya? Sorry, I'm doing my, my best. Hi. The names are a little bit, yes, the, it the is names Priya. are a little bit small. So. Hi, um, so at our company, um, governance is one of the issues that we have with processes that we have already um, you know, put together, but making sure that the teams across the organization adhere to the processes and make sure we are not creating any um, you know, deviations along the way. Um, you know, everybody is in a rush to deliver on the product, but you know, are we doing it right for the process is always a huge challenge trying to make sure everybody adheres to the process. Excellent. Great. So understanding, well, building in systems and, and, and processes, and you talk about governance, right? Governance is a theme that we talk about in this class. I, I think about governance is all about setting the direction of the firm uh, but also putting in accountability measures, right? How do we ensure that we're actually pursuing those intended purposes of the firm? And it, and it turns out that's a lot harder than maybe what it seems at first glance, right? There's a lot of complexity in trying to design a governance system that's actually going to help you achieve the right objectives as an organization. Excellent. Uh, let's see, is it, is it Anurag? Hello, see, am you, I audible? You can unmute. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning to everyone. Yeah. I can uh, basically mention, I did a project uh, for Bankers Without uh, Borders, uh, which is a Washington based organization. And there are three key issues which I faced for an organizational setup. Like they had to set up an, uh, like uh, their branch offices overseas. So they wanted to know what kind of uh, transaction structuring has to be there. Like whether it has to be a project office, like transfer pricing, it has to be a royalty based. So once an organization has to be set up, the kind of business which has to be transacted, what kind of uh, like structuring from a taxation point of view is to be there, that is something one. Second is the policy and procedures documentation. What kind of uh, local legislations are there in terms of taxation, in terms of like people management, social security benefits. And the third issue in terms of organizational setup, which I still remember, is that uh, which are the key processes since it's going to be a startup, which are the key processes which can be done in-house and which are some kind of a repetitive processes like payroll processing, which can be outsourced and doing a cost benefit analysis in terms of what can be retained in-house and what can be basically offshore. So these are the three key issues like structuring of the transaction, royalty or transfer pricing, then the policy and procedures. And the third one is basically like what has to be kept in-house and what can be basically outsourced. Fantastic. Great. Thanks for thanks for sharing Th those kinds of decisions, especially that last point that you made about what what goes in house, what 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 can be outsourced. Those are those are crucial decisions that organizations have to ha have to make. Right. Le leaders have to make those organizations as they're trying to design the most effective organization. Now, I would suggest that we could probably spend the next three hours uh, just talking about problems that you see in the organizations that you belong to. It turns out there's no shortage of problems that we face in organizations, which is great for people like me that study organizations. There's, there's great job security uh, when, when you study organizations because there's lots of complexity and there's lots of issues that organizations face. And, and so part of what we're going to try to do in this class, uh, you know, in the, in the eight week class, we, we really do a deep dive into organizations. And, and we talk about a lot of things that you've already brought up, right? We talk about purpose and we talk about governance. We talk about structures and some of the pros and cons of different structures. We talk about trying to manage growth and what are some of the unique challenges of a growing organization. We talk about how do you deal with complexity and uh, just instability in the external environment. Um, then in the second half of the class, we talk about things like, okay, as, as, a, as a leader, uh, how do you affect change effectively, right? How, how do you become a more effective change agent if you're trying to, uh, Get, get things done within an organization. We talk about culture. How do you build a, a, a culture that could lead to competitive advantage? We talk about decision making and how do you make better decisions and more ethical decisions as a leader? So 
again, th those are just a few of the issues that we'll talk about uh, in, in, in this particular class, right? As, as we strive to become more conversant in the language of organizations and understand some of the basic problems and what we can do as managers to help overcome those problems. All right, so if we wanna be better managers and we wanna deal with some of, the, some of the problems that organizations face, we gotta understand what an organization is. And so what I'd like to do is I have a little activity that we always do the first day of class that I, I wanna do with you. And you didn't know this when you came to this mock class today, but we're gonna, we're gonna draw an organization. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into breakout, we're, we're gonna get into breakout groups. So you'll be in a group of uh, f five or six. And what I want you to do is I want you together as, as a group to talk about and actually come up with a drawing, okay? So your task is to draw a picture that's a representation of an organization. Now, I've worked with a lot of business students over the years, and so there's only one rule. You can't draw an org chart. Okay, because I, if I don't tell you that, I know everybody's going to draw an org chart. I don't, I don't want an org chart. Uh, think creatively, right? Think, think of a picture that maybe acts as a metaphor for what an organization might be, right? Sometimes people draw sports teams or things out of nature. D draw a picture that can help teach us something about what an organization is, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 10 minutes to work in your breakout rooms and Draw, draw a quick little picture. You can draw it on a piece of paper that you can hold up and, and, and show to us, or some people get really fancy and they do something on their, on their computer. But a, as a group, come up with a picture, uh, a, a depiction of an organization. Then we're gonna call on some of your groups to share what it is that you came up with, okay? And then we'll see what, what can we extract uh, from this activity to help us learn some things about organizations. So you got 10 minutes, uh, go ahead and get into your breakout rooms. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you had a good uh, discussion with your breakout rooms there. So I'd love to hear from a couple groups, uh, either show us or tell us a little bit about what was the picture that you drew to represent an organization and, and why do you think that picture represents uh, how we should think about organizations? So let's, let's get a couple of you to, to volunteer here. Yeah, can you hear me? We can yeah. now. Hey, hey everyone. So. My group uh, and I met and we discussed, um, at first we're gonna name our team, team growth in our organization. And then the second part is locking arms, right? So very bad drawing, we're not very good at it or I am not very good at it. So here's our drawing, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, so basically it's represent like, you know, us locking arms together uh, um, as you illustrated earlier, we're all from different parts of the world. So we're understanding that building an organization we might build an organization around from different parts of the world. That's number one. Number two is we're thinking about from locking arms in unity, like no one can get to the top with the, without the, 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 the lowest link at the bottom as well. And if someone let go of that arm, then the organization failed. So even from this board members to the CEO, all the way down to the lower level employee, everyone's the success from their individual standpoint, which leads into the organizational standpoint as well. So locking arms, moving together, either we go up or down, um, making sure that we never release arms will create a very strong bond while we're trying to achieve success together um, for our team growth organization. Fantastic. Okay, so one way to think about an organization is a group of people locked arm in arm uh, working towards some common goal. Fantastic. All right, let's, let's hear from another. Let's see, Pamela. Hi. Um, so in our group, we we kind of got uh, really highly conceptual, um, but then we we managed to uh, draw um, a, a drawing here, which I'll just share. If I can. So I don't think you can share your screen. You may have to oh, uh, okay. just tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. It was, um, we kind of thought about it as like a, like a solar system or an ecosystem where you've got different things sort of ro rotating around a central kind of body where there's different exchanges of ideas and, and value adding activities. And essentially it's, it's, it's uh, like a whole ecosystem in of itself, trying to bring about some kind of 
uh, you know, gravity change and uh, change in velocity and and all that kind of thing. So um, yeah, that that was kind of the the central concept that we organized our ideas of organization around. Okay, excellent. So another way to draw an organization, draw something like a solar system or, or, or an ecosystem, lots of lots of different parts working together. Excellent. Um, let's see. Uh, Carl? Sure. So we, we, we came up with the idea, well, we, we started off kind of like Glenn did with this idea of interlocking arms. And, and, and it's, I mean, it's a great concept. Um, but one of our other members came up with the idea of uh, a plant. And um, I'm an environmental guy. I like I like that analogy a lot. And, and you know, the a plant's great because you've got, again, this kind of like the ecosystem or solar system idea. You've got a, a unit, an entity that's, you've got, you know, obviously the plant itself above ground, roots below ground, interaction with the environment. And that whole system's got to work together. If the roots aren't, if they're diseased or not functioning correctly, the, the plant's going to die. If the plant, if the top part of the plant, the exposed part isn't, processing sunlight correctly or whatever, or not getting the, the, the nutrients and things it needs from the roots, it's going to, it's going to fail. So, so that's a real, that's a real nice analogy too. Excellent. So an organization is kind of like a plant. Um, if we had more time, if this were a, a full live session class, we'd, we'd get to hear from a lot more of you. I'm sure some of you had amazing drawings or just ideas of drawings that you came up with. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to share with everyone, you can share in the chat. Uh, maybe what it is that you came up with. Um, what, what I'd like to do now is just step back and say, all right, Professor Bednar, we thought we were coming to a business uh, school class and you're having us draw pictures. What, what's, what's going on here? So let me ask you just to think about what, what are some of the lessons that maybe we can draw out of this, out of this activity that we did? Some of you may say, say, I'm much better equipped to apply to a business school uh, than I am to an art school, right? Um, so so maybe, that's a, maybe that's a key takeaway for, for some folks. But I would imagine that if we compared all the different drawings that, that people either conceptualized or that, or that you actually drew, you'd probably see some commonalities in some of the, some of the common features of what you chose to, to use to represent an organization, right? So I've done this activity lots of times with hundreds and hundreds of students, and I've seen some commonalities in some of the features of the drawings that students come up with. So a couple things. One, a lot of times the drawings that people have have some sense of an organization being goal directed. So, so there's some purpose that the organization exists to try and achieve, right? And organizations aren't just chaos, right? Even though sometimes life feels pretty chaotic within an organization, but there's some deliberately structured activity system within an organization, right? So, so there's, some, there's some method to the madness, right? There's some attempt to put some structure around the, the, the different parts of what an organization is trying to do. Organizations are social entities. We saw that with the locked arms, right? That uh, ultimately organizations are about people and the interactions that happen among people within, within those organizations. And organizations don't exist in a vacuum. They're linked to the external environment, right? So again, uh, all of these different drawings depict an organization in a different way, but you could probably see some commonalities, right? But there's also something to be learned by just the nature of this task that I had you to do. I, I gave you a pretty simple task to draw an organization. And I would imagine that there were a lot of different types of drawings that people came up with, right? So, What's the problem, right? I, I gave you a simple task. How come you didn't just draw me an organization? Well, uh, it, it turns out organizations are pretty complex and you can't really capture everything that you would need to know about an organization in one drawing, right? And I think there's an analogy here. In, in the class that I teach, we talk about organizational theories, right? And we talk about organizational theory. And sometimes practicing managers have a pretty dim view of theory. Right? They think, well, that's just for noodle head professors like you, Mike. Uh, in, in the real world, we don't, we don't need to talk about theory. But the truth of the matter is, practical managers, practicing managers actually do deal with theory all the time. Right? So the pictures that we drew, those aren't theories. Right? I'm not sure that we came up with a theory of locking arms in organizations. 
right? But there's a similarity between the theories that we use in organizations or, or, or the, yeah, the, the theories that we use in organizations and the pictures that, that we just drew, right? Theories help us make sense of complexity, right? Just like the drawings that you did, take a very complex subject like organizations and try to simplify it in a way that's a little bit more understandable, right? Um, theory is a naturally occurring phenomenon, right? Everybody has theories of how they think the world works. As a manager, you have theories of how you think you should manage people and, and how you think organizations work. Uh, there's also limits to theories, just like, again, I, I would imagine that some of your pictures probably depicted some aspects of organizations really well. They probably didn't depict other aspects of organizations very well. And as we learn different theories of organizations, we've just got to understand that every theory has limits, right? Every, every theory is, is really taking a picture of an organization and trying to teach us some useful thing about organizations, but it's not going to capture everything that, 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 that we need to know. So the purpose of the class that I teach is to try to expose you to lots of organizational theories that give you different snapshots of different important parts of an organization. And then you're able to use those theories and apply those theories in your specific context. Now, why should you care about theory? Well, it's because theories help us understand why the world looks the way that it does. It helps us understand why organizations look the way that they do. And the best theories help us to see causal relationships between different variables, right? So as a manager, it's really useful to know that if I see an increase in X, then I'm likely to see an increase in Y. Right. Uh, th th those causal relationships uh, can, can be very important if we're going to be an effective manager. So good theory, if we understand it and appropriately applied, can help us to design more effective organizations and help us to be better managers in those organizations. So what I'd like to do for the last few minutes of class is talk to you about three different pictures of organizations. I don't know if these are theories per se, but different ways of looking at organizations that might be useful to all of us as we think about our own organizations. Um, and, and, and this is consistent with what we do in this class, right? In, in, in this class, we spend some time talking at a pretty high level about theory, right? Thinking about the why. why. Why does the world look the way that it does? But what we're trying to do with those theories is we're trying to pull out managerial principles, which are just guidelines, right? General rules about how typically we should do things in an organization. And then ultimately, this is useful to the extent that we can apply that in our particular context, right? Uh, and, and so in this class, we, we go up and down this inverted triangle. Sometimes we're talking about theory. Sometimes we're doing a case and we're looking at how someone applied a theory and then we're trying to figure out, okay, what are the general principles that, that, we, that we can pull out of this particular case analysis, right? All right. So, so here's an example of three different pictures or different perspectives that we might have when we think about organizations. One is what we'll call the rational system perspective. And really the first people that studied organizations really looked at it from a rational system perspective. Here you can think about the picture of, of an organization as being kind of like a machine, right? I don't know if some of you drew a machine when you drew an organization, but that's one way that you can think about an organization, right? That it, it's a machine, it's got really well-defined parts, uh, people are just kind of cogs in the machine. Uh, when you think about structure in an organization, it's all about formal structure, right? We, we kind of create this machine with uh, a hierarchy that you might see on an org chart. Power tends to rest in the people at the top of the organization and the goals kind of go down from there, right? And, and so we have very specific goals where we think about efficiency and performance, you know, maybe financial performance, that, that, that's one picture that you could draw of an organization, right? Does that do a pretty good job of depicting what your organization looks like? Well, maybe, right? And, 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 and we could talk about that. But I would imagine that that's not a complete picture, right? So there's another picture that we could draw. And this picture is what we'll call a natural system perspective of organizations. And a natural system perspective says organizations are all about people, right? We can go back to that locking arms picture that we saw. Ultimately, organizations are groups of people. So, so the picture might be a picture of a family or a community of people, right? And now all of a sudden, organizations get pretty messy because people are messy, right? Anytime you get people involved, interacting, they start to do weird stuff. And they don't always just pursue 
uh, you know, efficiency. Oftentimes there's conflict and there's politics. And do you know what? The, the structure in an organization, there's a formal structure. There's also an informal structure that sometimes is just as important as the formal structure. And if you're going to be successful within an organization, you've got to understand what that informal structure looks like. And you've got to understand who has power and you've got to understand those internal networks within an organization. And, and so life gets a little bit messier and there's not just one goal that the organization pursues. There's lots of goals that the organization is pursuing simultaneously. All right. How many of you think that natural system picture, does that describe your organization? Well, I would imagine that maybe so, right? So some of you maybe said, yeah, mine's more like a machine. And some of you maybe said, well, mine's more like a community or a family. But there's probably aspects of that picture that resonate with some of your experience in your particular organization. Now, the last picture is what we'll call an open system perspective, right? So when we talked about the organization as a machine and the organization as a community of people, it's kind of an internal focus, right? But organizations don't exist in a vacuum. They have to interact with the external environment. And, and so the picture here might be an adaptive organism that has to adapt to the external environment or else it's not going to survive, right? Uh, some of the theories of open systems of organizations have their roots in biology, right? And, and the evolution of living things that have to adapt if they're going to survive. So now all of a sudden, uh, things are a little bit more complex because we've got to look outside of the organization. We've got to understand changes that we don't have control over. And we have to be flexible and adapt. And so these nice, neat structures that we talked about with a, with a rational system view, all of a sudden those have to be more flexible because we have to change depending on what's happening in the external environment. And so some of our goals sometimes change. We're just trying to survive, right? Ultimately, one of the goals that every organization has is to survive as the world around it changes. All right, so those are three pictures, right? You, you drew lots of different pictures of organizations. Those are three different pictures that we actually use in this class to think about organizations. Sometimes we think about organizations as a machine. Sometimes we think about organizations as a community of people. And sometimes we think about organizations as an adaptive organism that has to respond to the needs of the external environment if it's going to survive. So here's my question. Which one of these is the right way to think about an organization? This is your first quiz as a member of my mock class. What's the, what, what's the right way to, to think about an organization? Is it a machine? Is it a community of people? Is it an adaptive organism? H how would you respond to that question? Anybody want to any, any brave soul want to want to take a shot? How would you respond to that question? Oh, I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of answers in the chat, right? Um, Sarah, what do you think? If I have to choose, I would think that they all are the right answer because at different times, I, I'm just thinking about my organization and we kind of, depending on the time of the year, um, the specific situation that we are trying to resolve, um, we kind of fluctuate through those different, uh, all three of those different ones. Excellent. Yeah, and I, I think that's, it, it's kind of a trick question, right? So that would be a really bad multiple choice question on a, on, on a test, because the answer is every organization really is all three. And, and these just become lenses through which you can view your organization. And sometimes as a manager, you need to look at your organization through a rational system lens. And you need to focus on, on processes that are leading to efficiency. And you need to focus on, do we have the right structures in place? But sometimes as a manager, you need to look at your organization through a natural system lens and you need to think about, OK, what kind of a culture are we developing and what are the interactions like between people and what kind of conflict do we have in our organization? Do we have conflicting goals that are working at cross purposes so that we're not able to be as effective as what we need to be? And sometimes as a manager, you have to put on an open system lens and you have to look outside the organization and say, OK, what are new technologies? that we're not well prepared for, what, what are some of our competitors doing? You've got to look outside the organization and think about how do we need to adapt in order to, to survive and to continue to be effective. So, so really, that's one of the takeaways. And this is, this is something that we talk about throughout the eight weeks of the class that I teach is, as a manager, you've got to be able to use all three of these different lenses if you're going to be an effective manager. 
Sometimes we get into trouble because we have one lens that we look at. We look at everything as a people problem and we only see through a natural system lens and maybe we forget about looking outside the organization and thinking about how we have to adapt. Or sometimes we're so focused on efficiency that we don't think about people at all, right? And, and so again, as, to be an effective manager, you have to be able to view your organization through all three of these different lenses. So sometimes there are tensions between these views, right? Sometimes as you, as you strive to make the organization a little bit more rational and a little bit more efficient, you can suck the life out of an organization. And sometimes as you get really good at doing something, you become really efficient at doing something really well, well, then all of a sudden you build structures that make it really hard for you to adapt when the world around you changes. So there's always tensions between these different views of the world uh, as you're trying to lead an effective organization. Think about your own organization, right? Uh, do you, what, what, what would your organization look like if you viewed your organization as a machine? What are some of the things that you would see? What are some of the problems that might come to light? What are some of the solutions that you might be pointed towards? Now, what about if you view your same organization now through a natural system lens? What are some of the things that you see? What are some of the problems that you might identify that you might not otherwise see? And then what would happen if you used an open system lens? Now you're looking outside of your organization. You're thinking about how the world around you is changing. Well, what, what are some of the problems that you have to deal with as a manager that now you're gonna see. Again, over the course of the class that I teach, we, we, we practice using these different lenses and we talk about other theories of organizations that help us see some of the problems that you face all the time in your various organizations. And we learn some principles that help us to, to find solutions that then you can take with your expertise about your particular organizations. You can take those principles and figure out how to apply them in your particular organization. Hopefully that's helpful. Again, uh, as we think about what, what we've talked about just in the, in the few minutes that we've had today, there's a few takeaways. One is that maybe I should care about theory as a, as, as a manager, right? That uh, theories influence what we do. They influence the decisions that we make. Uh, and, and ultimately we've gotta be good at understanding theory, understanding the why, but then we also have to be able to draw out principles, those guiding, uh, the, 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 those guidelines, those general rules, and then we ultimately theory has to be practical. We've got to be able to apply those key lessons in our particular circumstances. We've got to have multiple perspectives. We've got to be careful about only viewing the world through one perspective and through one lens. And managers have to be able to take a broader view and have tools in their managerial toolkit that help them to see problems from different lenses. And so again, this class, the, the whole purpose of this class is to help you refine your theory your understanding of organizations so that you can be a more effective manager. All right. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense of what we might do in a live session. Uh, again, typically in a live session, we would have twice as much time as what we had here today. And you would come in having read some material. And so everyone would be prepared. You would have uh, read an article or a case that we would use as part of the basis for, for, for this discussion, but hopefully you get a little bit of a sense of how interactive uh, a, a live session could be, even in this kind of a format. Um, I've, I've taught in lots of different formats and I've found that uh, these kinds of classes are a lot of fun. And one of the cool things I teach in the IMBA program and inevitably we'll do a case. So uh, one of the cases that we do is about Microsoft. And inevitably we have a few uh, students that are working at Microsoft. And so we're talking about a restructuring at Microsoft and inevitably we have three or four students that say, hey, Professor Bednar, I was actually there for that restructuring. Let me tell you a little bit about what, what, what that was like. And, and so again, we just have such a diverse set of experiences and, and we have a lot of students from all over that, that really brings so much insight into the lessons that we do in our, in our, in our, in our live sessions. So. Anyway, that, that's, uh, that, that's what I wanted to, to go over with you. And Kate, I'll turn it back over to you. I think there's some time for some questions. Uh, if I can be helpful, please, uh, please let me know. Sure, thank you, Professor Bednar. Um, I did put in the chat, if, does anybody have any questions um, about the topic or the live class? Feel free to raise your hand right now. I was monitoring the chat and there weren't really any 
uh, great comments, great. Um, I saw some great pictures about your uh, breakout session, but let's go ahead with Abdul. Oh, Abdul's gone. Um, anybody else have any questions before we wrap up here? Kate, I see a question from Ryan. Is the actual live class 90 minutes? Yeah, that's right. So we have 90 minutes for the, the live session classes. I was supposed to be about 45 minutes today. <laughs> you did great. Um, let's see. Any other questions? There is a question uh, asking to recap the admissions process, please. Right. So that um, the admissions process will probably take us a little bit longer to get through. But basically, um, we do have an application open right now. The next deadline is July 7th, which is a final deadline to start this fall. Um, but for the application, you'll need a resume, your academic history, including transcripts and um, degree certificates. You will need a personal statement as well as two letters of recommendation. So um, you can reach out to us with any other questions. We're happy to walk you through that process. But since I don't see hey, any live, yep, go ahead. Hey, I, I just saw a couple of questions in the in the chat just about what do I do if I'm in India and I'm on the other side of the world and it's two in the morning. Um, we we actually have three live sessions. So in in the eight week class that I teach, every week we'll have three live sessions. So we have one in the morning, one in the late afternoon, and one in the evening. Uh, hopefully to accommodate people all over the world in different time zones. Uh, so hopefully you can find a you can find a live session that's not at two o'clock in the morning. All of the live sessions are recorded. We strongly encourage uh, people to come to the live sessions. There's just an energy that you can't get from just watching the recording. Some of the breakout rooms and, and some of those experiences are really what make these online programs uh, really unique. Um, but, but again, if, if for some reason you can't come to a live session, there are recordings that, that, that you can watch as well. Perfect. Well, um, I think we're, we have about uh, a minute or so left and in the uh, effort to uh, appreciate everyone's time. Um, we are going to wrap this up today. Thank you, Professor Bednar. Um, we so appreciate all of your great insights today. I hope everyone enjoyed this live class experience, which would really be just like one of the classes you would experience in our program. Thank you to all the participants today for attending this mock lecture with some great questions and comments um, in the chat. I would like to offer an application fee waiver through the end of the week for everyone in attendance today. You can find that code on the slide um, on your screen right now. Just go ahead when you complete your application um, in that application fee section, you'll enter join geese June um, through Friday and you will have uh, no payment required. I will go ahead and send this also out in a follow-up email for all of our attendees today. We hope, to, we hope that you just gain some valuable knowledge as well today and you're inspired to submit that application. As I said, the next deadline is coming up for an August start. Um, that deadline is July 7th for fall 2022. And then our applications will open up here in mid-July for spring of 2023. Thanks again, Professor Bednar. This was a great session. Thanks for walking us through what, what this live session would look like. And thank you to everyone else for being here today. Um, we hope that you have have a great rest of your day. Feel free to reach out to us with questions. Bye, everyone.